Euronet Plus Panorama is a weekly review of European news broadcast by our network of EU radio stations. Hi, I'm Jo, and you're listening to our Panorama podcast. With the war limiting access to Black Sea ports, Ukraine has had to find other ways of getting its products to market. As a result, Ukrainian grains and seeds have flooded Central and Eastern Europe, much to the dismay of the region's farmers. Ukraine, one of the world's largest grain exporters, called on the help of its EU neighbours back in February 2022. Ever since then, this beleaguered farming nation, which is commonly known as the breadbasket of Europe, has been exporting millions of tonnes of grain through its three ports on the Danube. While much of this cheap grain is destined for North Africa and the Middle East, logistical problems have led to it getting stuck in Eastern Europe, where it's been leaking out onto the local market. This has had major repercussions on local farmers, many of whom now claim to be on the verge of bankruptcy. In a letter addressed to the European Commission, Romania, Poland, Hungary, Slovakia and Bulgaria requested additional support for the farmers affected, as well as the reintroduction of customs duties on agricultural products from Ukraine. Most of these duties were scrapped before the war even started, under the EU-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement. But at that time, very few Ukrainian goods ended up in Eastern Europe. Following a bumper harvest in Ukraine in 2021, though, the country's produce became even cheaper and began to encroach on the European market. Subsequently, four of Ukraine's neighbours suspended the import of its cereals and other agricultural products. Bulgaria was the latest country to impose such a ban. Over 20 agricultural goods and foodstuffs from Ukraine, including cereals, sunflower seeds, meat, eggs and milk, will not be allowed into Bulgaria until at least the end of June. The temporary ban was announced, and justified, by Galab Donev, Bulgaria's acting Prime Minister. We are compelled to adopt this national measure whilst the European authorities are still formulating an adequate response to the changed circumstances to which these solidarity lanes have led. Bulgaria remains in solidarity with Ukraine, but the bankruptcies of Bulgarian farmers will do nothing for its cause. The country's acting agriculture minister, Yavor Gedchev, told BNR that Bulgaria remains in solidarity with Ukraine and that it is in everyone's interest to find a workable solution to this crisis without delay. We insist that we are not pushing for extreme measures. On the contrary, we want the corridors to serve as corridors. We should be in solidarity with Ukraine, because what is happening does not suit Ukraine, Bulgaria or the EU. In fact, markets are being lost by Bulgaria, Romania and Ukraine. Tenders for various supplies are being won en masse at low prices by Russia. We have agreed to seek a sustainable solution. Getchev reiterated at Tuesday's council meeting that Bulgaria expects a workable EU-wide decision on the so-called solidarity lanes and does not expect Bulgaria to be sanctioned for the measures it's felt compelled to take. Although these kinds of unilateral measures break the terms of the single market, there are no sanctions proposed as yet. For its part, Radio Romania reports Romanian farmers' claims that they alone have lost more than 200 million euros as their customers have snapped up Ukraine's cheaper produce. Yet Romania is the only one of the five countries affected that is still allowing Ukrainian exports in. Romania will not unilaterally ban imports of Ukrainian grains and will instead wait for the European Commission to implement support measures for farmers, said the country's agriculture minister, Petre Daya. We are in solidarity with farmers in other countries, Poland, Hungary, Bulgaria and Slovakia, just as they are in solidarity with us and with the Ukrainian farmers, but we must have common rules. Let's not get into a competition of legal decisions. That won't help any of us. On the contrary, it creates additional problems for us because Romanian farmers are asking themselves, how can Romania not block imports when others can? That is why we have agreed to wait for the Commission's decision. However, even the Romanian authorities have started to check the quality of cereals entering the country 
and to seal and monitor the shipments in transit. Other countries have also been affected, but to a lesser degree. Slovenia's Minister of Agriculture, Irena Shinko, for example, has spoken of problems in her country linked to increased flour and chicken imports. RTV Slovenia reports. On Monday this week, the 24th of April, the European Parliament's Agriculture Committee debated the issue. Ukraine's Deputy Minister of Agriculture, Markian Dimitresevich, who was present at the meeting, cautioned that such disputes play right into Moscow's hands. The enemy tries to use such discussions for their own purposes, but together we will not let them do it. All MEPs agreed on the need to remain supportive to Ukraine. That's not the issue at stake here, said German Green Martin Häusling, whose more practical questions are shared by AMS. It should be clear to everyone that it is in Ukraine's interest to export this grain. What isn't working for so much of it to get stuck in neighbouring countries? The point is to deliver the grain to European ports. That grain could also be loaded onto Europe's railway network. Are there still problems? Do you need more support? Do the transport capacities have to be expanded so that not everything is transported by truck? I think this is a key question. Of course, I can understand the problems faced by farmers in neighbouring countries, but that is solvable. We must not let this dispute escalate any further. In a conversation with Ginu Radias, the chair of the Lithuanian Grain Growers Association, Auschwitz Masijauskas, draws a parallel between the situation with Ukrainian grains now and a similar situation that arose almost 20 years ago when Hungary joined the EU. He suggests that the solution that was found back then could work just as well today. One of the simplest solutions would be to pay a subsidy for grain that is loaded onto a ship. For example, if the grain goes to the port of Gdansk or Klaipeda and is loaded onto a ship, a subsidy is simply paid. This is such a simple way of encouraging that grain to be loaded onto ships to sail away, and this problem wouldn't exist. A similar situation existed, as I recall, after Hungary joined the EU. The countries bordering Hungary complained a lot about the drop in corn prices because the Hungarians were now transporting it freely. This was when the subsidies were paid to get the corn out of the European Union, and the problem was solved in the short term, and eventually it resolved itself. The unilateral measures taken by these four member states were heavily criticised at the Agriculture and Fisheries Council in Luxembourg on Tuesday, with everyone agreeing that the problem requires an EU-level solution. In the end, the European Commission proposed a temporary ban on the import of five key products that account for 90% of Ukraine's agricultural exports to the EU as Agriculture Commissioner Janusz Wojciechowski explained after the meeting. We fully understand this five member states' request to introduce measure against this oversupply of products from Ukraine because it creates many problems for the farmers in these frontline countries. Now the Commission proposal on the table is to introduce temporary import ban but not for the whole European Union, but only for five frontline countries, for five products, five more sensitive products, which is maize, wheat, rapeseed, sunflower seeds and sunflower oil. This Brussels-imposed ban was only slated to last until the 5th of June, when the EU's ATM regulation, which has further liberalised trade with Ukraine, expires a timescale that the five member states involved considered insufficient. Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has suggested that the institution will now also activate the safeguard mechanism that accompanied the ATM regulation, a mechanism designed to protect the EU market from any potential negative impact of Ukrainian imports. But international transit expert Raivo Vare tells Cuckoo Radio that the transit procedure is at the heart of the matter. Brussels has, therefore, also offered to facilitate the transit of Ukrainian supplies through border countries. 
tegelikult juba ka esimesed reeglid muudatused. In fact, the first rule changes have already started. The Slovaks have taken this up. The Poles are currently negotiating with the Ukrainians. Ukrainian grain will be exported in consignments. In other words, to take it through Polish territory to where it is needed, to the ports, and from there to third countries, which was the original idea. Bulgaria and Romania have also pledged to do the same thing. In fact, Poland and Ukraine have now reached an agreement to resume the flow of goods. While they are being escorted across the country, Ukrainian agricultural products will be sealed with electronic GPS seals to ensure that no Ukrainian grain whatsoever stays in Poland, as Poland's agriculture minister Robert Telus explains. These seals will be put on at the Ukrainian border in collaboration with Ukraine. They will be Polish seals, property of our agency. The seal will only be taken away once the truck has reached the place where it will be unloaded under the control of our agency. I am really very happy with this agreement. We had two days of talks with the Ukrainian side whose involvement was needed so that they would oversee this process as well. The European Commission is, moreover, preparing to present a 100 million euro financial support package for affected farmers, on top of the 56.3 million euros granted last month. Talks on Wednesday between the European Commission, Poland, Bulgaria, Romania, Slovakia and Hungary did not yield concrete results, says Polski Radio. Since then, however, further progress has been made, with the Commission bowing to pressure to extend its ban until the end of the year. Commissioner Wojciechowski points out that the latest version of the Commission proposal is very favourable to Poland, which is set to receive 40% of the additional €100 million Euro aid package. With Hungary announcing that it will be extending its embargo to dozens more Ukrainian food products, he warns, though, that only those countries that lift their unilateral bans will be in line to receive this support. If unilateral import restrictions are maintained, we will be asked in no uncertain terms on what basis a country can demand compensation for excessive imports when it has prohibited these imports. It will then be very difficult to get approval for state aid. I want to make this clear so that there are no surprises if this kind of problem arises because sadly it cannot be ruled out. Meanwhile, Antanas Venkus, who is responsible for export promotion at Lithuania's Ministry of Agriculture, says that Lithuania will do everything in its power to help Ukraine transport its agricultural produce by giving it access to the Lithuanian port of Klaipeda. We really care about Ukraine. Our ambition is for Ukraine to gain access to global grain markets and the European Union's transit system. The solidarity lane is being promoted to this end. What we are proposing is to make maximum use of Lithuania's Klaipeda seaport, together with its rail infrastructure, to transport as much grain as possible, as much as possible from Ukraine through Lithuanian territory. In order to achieve this, we have drawn up a proposal in partnership with other Lithuanian institutions to transfer the sanitary, phytosanitary and other checks that have previously been carried out at the Ukrainian-Polish border to the port of Klaipeda, thus reducing the administrative burden on Polish officials. In related news, Spain's S Radio reports on Russian accusations that Ukraine has been using the safe ports that were negotiated in July 2022 for Black Sea grain exports for military action. Moscow has threatened to end the agreement, which would put even more strain on Europe. Thanks for listening. We'll be taking a two-week break now, but we'll be back with more insight into EU affairs on the 19th of May. Make sure you join us then.